Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, Vincent LaRusser and I are going to be discussing the latest news that KISS sold their brand to Pop House. We'll talk about what this does and does not mean. And of course, if you watch my show, you kind of got a heads up about this a week beforehand during my great interview with Doc McGee. There's so much to cover on this topic, lots to discuss. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. So let's jump in and let's get started. everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brun. Today I have with me my buddy, comrade. <laughs> I'm not going to call him my partner in crime because you always no. say, what are we committing to crime in? Yeah, How yeah. are you doing today, bloody? <laughs> good, good. Doing well. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So mm. it is a Saturday morning and we said, you know what? There's been a lot of kiss news over the last week. Um, obviously, the big news this week is that they have sold the brands and we were like, well, we've got to jump on and talk about this a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny because it actually started before the big announcement that I think was Thursday this week. You had, you know, I had done that doc interview last week. Um, you had watched it and you're like, do you think we should jump on and talk a little bit about some of the stuff that doc mentions? And yeah. we were like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that never I said, happened. <laughs> I said, let's do a podcast on the podcast. Did you That's did. exactly That's what, what you said? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And you know what? I'll, I'll just say this for a moment. I think for me, that was not because you're my friend, but that was the most exciting response I got to that doc interview. And I've mm. got a tremendous amount of really positive responses. And, and you know, a lot of people have watched it. But why do I say that your comment is the one that got me most excited? Well, you knew, unlike everybody else, you knew that I was trying to get Doc. And, and I'd been working on this for about six weeks, right? And trying mm -hmm. to square away a date. He picked a date. I couldn't do it. I was on a business trip. Then I picked it. So anyway, but when I first told you that I was going to get Doc on again, your first response, if you remember this, was why? Do you think yeah. he has anything that people want to talk about mm -hmm. and hear about? And then for you to go from that, like why you having Doc mm -hmm. on again to, oh, we have to do a podcast on your podcast. I was like, right. all right, yeah. I guess that was kind of good that we did that. And, yeah. and, and I was surprised coming off of that interview, and I've said this online to a few people, that I thought the talk was going to be oh my God, Kiss found somebody to buy the brand. I can't believe it, you know? Mm. But instead, most people were focusing on there's going to be another cruise. Oh, there's going to be more box sets. Uh, I know some of the, the music media picked up his comments, which I wasn't surprised about, John Bon Jovi and the whole Moscow Music Peace Festival. The selling of the brand, although I circled back to it a few times in the interview, because to me, I was like, holy crap, this is big news. Um, kind of flew under the radar a little bit for that first yeah. week. And then all yeah. of a sudden Thursday, bang, this big announcement comes out. And a few people were like, well, if you watch Mike's interview with Doc, this is not a surprise. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I actually thought I was going to get more traction on the Doc interview from that than anything else. Not that I care one way or another, but I was just surprised that KISS fans weren't latching onto that during that Doc interview. And I think you latched onto it somewhat, right? And that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. you called me, right? Yeah. I mean, let's let's just take a step back at first. Yeah. I mean, we we always like to do this. You know, it's it's 1987. We're sitting in your room listening to music, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And now it's 2000, 2024, and you're you're interviewing. You have the the ability at this point because of your show to interview. You know, Kiss's manager for how many years now? Twenty plus years. Yeah, uh, twenty five, right? almost thirty, I think. Right, right, and. He feels comfortable enough not to say uh, I decline answering this question. Yeah. You know, the best part of that interview or the best parts of that interview, interview and I think it's a credit to what you do and the, and the show that you've built up. And, you know, you should be very proud of what you've done to do that. I know you don't like to give yourself credit. You're like uncredit, man. I don't know why, <laughs> but 
like an uh, credit, man. But you know, the fact that he has the trust and the ability, the comfort level. I mean, that was the thing that I I enjoyed most about it. He mm-hmm. did not really dance around anything. Right. You know, he was very, very open and honest. He didn't say, well, you know, you'll, you know, uh, I don't can't really say that right now. He pretty much confirmed. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. we're very close to this, you know, right. and yeah. what is it going to do? It's going to give us the ability to do this right. because I'm, you know, my team has been handling this yep. and you know what I mean? Um, so right. obviously he couldn't say the name of the company yet because the, right. the T's weren't crossed and the I's weren't dotted. And I respect yeah. that, but yeah, mm-hmm. he was pretty much open about everything else except who it was with. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's what I enjoyed so much because I really and I understand at times when, you know, somebody gets interviewed and they're just, you know, they're just giving you roundabout answers and stuff like yeah. that for whatever the reasons are. But that's what I really, I think, enjoyed about that uh, that interview is because there was a really a lot of good information. He asked a lot of great questions and he had a lot of great answers. So <laughs> hence, it was a great podcast. And that's why I said, we should do a podcast on the podcast. So, so then you know. this this announcement, the official announcement, made it easy to say, yeah, let's jump on and talk about it. And you know, the last yeah. thing I'll say, because you're saying how Doc was forthcoming with his responses, when I asked him about the rumors that Kiss was looking to sell the brand, he could have said, you know, we're looking at that. I don't have much more to say right now. He could have exactly. said, you know, he could have said, I, I can't comment on that right now because obviously the contract wasn't 100% final and the big press release wasn't made yet. Mm-hmm. But instead he was like, yeah, we found a partner. We've, we've got that done. And so it was kind of, uh, if you could have seen my response when he answered like that, I was like, what? I was stunned yeah. when he reacted yeah. that way because I honestly expected him to give me kind of like a stock answer there. Like, yeah, that's not really something I could talk about right now. Yeah, we're always looking to sell stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I figured him to go into like a just a doc speech, but instead he was like, no, we found the pot. I'm like, whoa, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, and then you texted me once the official announcement was made. Oh, have you heard of Pop House before? You know, whatever. So, you know, I'm sure at this point, you know, and a lot of people do, Pop House is the one that has the ABBA avatars, but I think they purchased Cindy Lauper's um, music yeah. as well. And and they're working on the Kiss avatars as well. So that partnership mm-hmm. makes sense, I think. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I read the co-founder is actually the guy who was in ABBA. I, I don't know. I don't know his name, but. Oh, right. I see that. I didn't realize. Okay. Which kind of makes sense because. They did the voyage. I think it's pronounced yeah. the Apple. Oh, is that the know? way I just always say voyage? But is it yeah, voyage? I think it's voyage. <laughs> voyage. Okay. So it's not one it's of not... your mispronunciations no, that you like to think, do. Well, all the time. well, well, it could be, you know. Okay. But it sounds more sophisticated. Did you watch the voyage? You know? <laughs> Would you like some wine with your voyage? You know. So, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And you know, what? I wanted. Wow, just... I knew something you didn't know. Yes, I did not know the pronunciation of that. No, so... no, about the, the fact that it oh. was the. Co-founded by one of the members of ABBA. I did. I did not know that. Minus no. Costello. Minus. Okay. Bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I laughed. I find it funny. But um, you know, one of one of the things that I want to make sure that we clarify for the people watching and listening to this, because a lot of people were like, "Oh, three hundred million dollars." I thought Kiss would have got more for their catalog. A couple of things. Number one, the three hundred million dollar quote is not in any of the official press releases. I'm not even 100% sure where that number originated from. I've seen some people say Forbes. I've seen some people say Gene. I don't think it came from Gene because I know Gene did an interview, I think, yesterday. And I knew that number before that Gene interview. But I'm not sure that that 300 million number is official, first off. But more important than that, because for a moment, who cares about the actual number itself? This sale is very different than Springsteen, Sting, and all these other artists that are selling their catalog, Bob Dylan's selling their catalog. Kiss sold their catalog. I don't even know how much you realize this. In like 1989 or 1990, right? They sold the rights to their music at that time. This sale is largely trademark, the logo, the makeup, all of that type of stuff. Yes, they have some newer records that were under their Mm -hmm. control, but those classic 70s albums, and let's be honest, that's where the money is, right? Kiss has not owned those for decades. Right. So Universal Music Group, which is now whatever, I think, or mm-hmm. maybe still Universal Music Music Group, still has the owns the rights to those things. Yes. And I, I read in one of the, I think the press release is saying that the company Pop House, right? That's what it yep. is. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, we have a great relationship with them, which tells you, I mean, to what you're saying is that, yes, 
it's the, the control uh, as far as the catalog is still with that music group uh, right. and and you know pop house will work with them in any sort of ventures that they want to do if they you know people will say i saw some people okay great now the off the soundboard records could come out and more of them you know they could continue with those and this mm -hmm. and that you know so they'll as doc was saying you know my team handles this you know we i've been doing that you know my team right. is doing that you know, and there's only so many resources we have, whether it's monetarily staffing, you know, you know, now you have this, this company this you know, that can handle all this stuff, you know, yep. specializes in this stuff. So I think that's what he was kind of alluding to as far as excitement for KISS fans is that, you know, more KISS products, the 50th anniversary, why has it not been a 50th anniversary, you know, of the first album or whatever? Yep. Well, now, you know, we knew, we kind of knew, but now yeah. we could be like, okay, well, this stuff could start coming out. So Which how Doc soon said, and all that? Doc yeah. said about three months, things are going to yeah. pick up again. So, um, right. you know, but yeah, I mean, I think stuff like the off the soundboard recordings, Kiss actually owned those and licensed those to Universal. And I don't have the CD here in front of me, but I think if you look at the back, it says it was licensed to Universal. Mm. And I don't know exactly what those contracts are like, but it could have been a two-year license, five-year license, uh, who knows. But I think KISS owned those masters as opposed to if Pop House wants to use the Rock and Roll Over album for right. their avatars. KISS right. does not own that. Pop House does not own that. Pop House will have to go back to Universal now and pay them a fee to utilize the sound recordings from Rock and Roll Over, as my example here. Yeah. And this is exactly why Kiss re recorded like 15 of their classics, whatever it was, like 10 years ago. And people were like, oh, these are not as good as the originals, blah, blah, blah. They're not intended to be as good as the originals. They're, those recordings were intended, if you remember, I think it was the Dr. Pepper um, commercial, it had a recording of Dr. Love in it. They could use the new recording. They don't have to go to Universal for the old recording that they don't have rights to. They could use the new recording that they do have the rights to. Well, right? have, you, have you ever noticed in, in, a, in a lot of movies, maybe lower budget movies, you know, there would be a, a version of a song and it would be a covered yes. version of it because they didn't, you know, because of the rights. And yeah, I think it was, um, was it uh, Sonic Boom? Right yes. when Sonic Boom, that was it was like the bonus stuff on the CD. Exactly. Right. So, and I I remember specifically in games like Rock Band or Guitar Hero, there were Kiss songs on there, and they were not the original versions because they exactly. were smart enough to know like, all right, how are we going to profit off of this? You know, but the funny thing, and just we just touch upon it very quickly, is that you know, 1989 Brain of Kiss as opposed to 1996 version of Kiss. Mm -hmm. You know, would they have sold that? They probably wouldn't have. And you know, 89. You know, you know, we always have talked about in the past, you know, Kiss was never truly in the mid to late 80s a able to catch up with the Bon Jovi's and the Def Leppard's and, and that kind of success. I mean, yep. they did OK, but we also know that certain tours didn't do very well. Right. Yep. And yep. They, they quite never, even though they tried hard to have certain songs to kind of compete with those bands. And um, I guess they felt at the time like this could be a way to really kind of cash in not yep. knowing what was going to come, you <laughs> yeah. know, six years, seven years later, you yep. know? So yep. um, if it is in excess of, I've heard in excess of $300 million, well, I, you know what? They did great on their investment. You know mm. what I mean? As far mm. as and investment. That, that, that's they, for the makeup, know, the, the logo, product. right. And, and, yeah. and a couple of albums that, let's be honest, except for Die Hards or myself, they don't really care about Monster. Yeah, I might love yeah. the album, but... That's not you're not paying three hundred million dollars for the for the rights to Monster, you know, as much as I love the record, um, and that's where I say, you know what, whether that number's three hundred million high or lower, it did not include those classic albums, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine how much they would have got today if they still had the rights to those that music. I mean, this mm -hmm. this deal would have been six, seven, eight, nine hundred million. Who knows what it would have been, right? Um, well, do but, you know the figures of what like Springsteen got and Dylan and all those? I, I don't really know. I know every one of them is different. I I, I want to say Springsteen was like $500 million or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. And and Dylan was maybe a little less. I don't remember. I know ZZ Top yeah. sold this. So, uh, oh, there's this, I feel like every other week you're hearing about another artist selling the rights mm -hmm. to their music away. Because mm -hmm. I guess as you get older, you know, I've heard people say, you know, I guess Paul and Gene don't care about their legacy. They're willing to sell it away. Look, these guys are in their 70s, and the reality is probably their family, their children, 
don't want to worry about, gee, do I want to go into a meeting and say that I'm going to put the kiss makeup on a lunchbox or what? The kids probably, that's not what they're into. They're, they're into their own thing, whatever it is. They don't want to be the management of the kiss company. And I can respect that, right? Mm-hmm. I, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to follow my own path. I didn't want to follow in my father's footsteps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do what I wanted to do with my life. Same for Paul and Jean's kids. They don't want to be sitting in a boardroom worrying about, you know, this meeting about this kiss product or that kiss product. They have their own lives. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that to me at all. So mm-hmm. of course, Paul and Jean are in their seventies. It makes sense to sell the brand. Look, I think it's amazing. I mean, think about this. In 1973, 1974, Paul, Gene, Peter, and Ace get together to form a band. Imagine telling them at that point, hey, one day you're going to sell the brand, not even Mm -hmm. the music, just the brand, your concept that you just came up with, the logo, the makeup, and all of that for $300 million. (laughs) Imagine telling those 20-some-year-old kids that are starting a band. Imagine you starting a band right now. You're in the Dexters, and somebody's saying to you in 20 years, Hey, Vin, I'm going to give you $300 million for that Dexter's logo and the rights mm-hmm. to use that. You'd freaking fall off your chair, I think. <laughs> right. And 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 the thing that should be noted, and I, I shouldn't just assume these things, but, you know, as far as the kids, because people might say, well, you know, you know, then they're not leaving. It's like, you know, when somebody passes and they have a will and they and they leave something to them. But if Gene and Paul are getting $150 million each, where's that money going? I mean, I'm sure they're going to be sure that they're, their kids are taken care of. You know, of they're course. gonna they're gonna see a, probably a good sum of that money, anyways, yep. and and they're yep. gonna be set. They're, they're already set for life. They're I'm already sure. set for life. Yeah. You know, so I mean, so it's not like they're not benefiting from this. And of course, I mean, again, I don't know for facts, but I just gotta assume. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes, so. absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the things I also thought of with this sale. And that's why I wanted to really just stress that it's, you know, it's the makeup, it's the logo, it's the trademarks, it's the thousands of pieces of merchandise that KISS have out there. But think about the last 15 years or so, mm-hmm. almost every interview with Ace Freely, he makes a point of saying how he still owns the makeup and he licenses it back to KISS. <laughs> I see you shaking your head. Now think about this for a moment. Let's pretend for 30 seconds that Ace was correct in what he was saying. Ace would have had to have been part of this contract. Absolutely. <laughs> and clearly he's not. Yeah. Right. So I'm curious to see Ace's reaction at some point in the near future when he realizes, oh crap, I didn't own that makeup all this time. I wasn't licensing it to Kiss. They just sold it to Pop House and I'm not getting a dime from that. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. curious to see because he's been adamant, even as recently as like when I interviewed him, he was like, you know, I still own that makeup and I license it back to them. Mm -hmm. And either he's just that oblivious, which I think is the probable case, or he's been told faulty information from a lawyer, which I guess is also possible. But somewhere in the last week or somewhere in the very near future, Ace is going to wake up one day and realize that what he's been saying for the last 15 years is not right, that he did not Mm -hmm. ever own that makeup. He sold it Mm -hmm. to Kiss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious because there hasn't really been any comment by him or Peter at this point, right? No, no. And Peter does no press and, you know, look more power to Peter. He seems to be living a a good life. And I know he just did something in the city a couple of weeks ago. I wish I could have gone to that. He seems happy, content. I don't expect to see any comments from Peter saying that. I do wonder when they see this news and they sold the brand for $300 million, if there's any regret. I know he's wrote his book, No Regrets, (laughs) but do you wake up and say, damn, I gave away my my makeup rights for whatever it was, a million dollars. I don't know what it was. And look at what Paul and Gene just cashed out on. I think they've thought about this way before this happened, you know, when they see, you know, how the brand has gotten stronger. But mm-hmm. yeah, even more so now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you have to have a lot. I mean, look, Kiss sold away their music rights in the 80s, right? And if they held on to it, they could have got millions and millions more now, right? So mm-hmm. you could always look back. And I'm sure there's things that I could look back on in my life and say, gee, I wish I didn't sell X. I wish I would have held on to it. You know, mm-hmm. that's just that's just life. And Ace and Peter made no different choices than you and I make on a small scale. <laughs> you know, so, Absolutely. Um, but, Absolutely. But to say that, they, look... I might have sold baseball cards of mine in the 1990s and wish I held on to it because they were worth more money today. And I'm just making up an example. I right? did do that. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. And I could sit there and say, gee, I have a regret for a second. So like, oh, I wish mm-hmm. I didn't sell that. I could have sold it now. There's no way Ace and Peter can't have a small amount of regret today. There's of just, like, to me, that's impossible. You're not human. It's just a normal human reaction. 
listen, more so Ace than Peter because Ace has been active. Yes. Come on. I don't care what they say. And he always says, well, if the money's right, I'll do, you know, you don't think, you know, especially that he rags on Tommy all the time. You don't think that he wishes all these years he's he was still part of this thing, right. benefiting from the amount of money, especially A seems very money driven. Yep. Um, of course, they thought about this. That being said, he's done well enough. He's 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 had a, you know, a successful solo career and yep. seems financially to be OK. Um, but. You know, not, not if you ask the government, I think he owes a lot of back taxes, but, <laughs> but you know what? True. I'll say this about Ace, him not being a part of Kiss was always his doing. He's the one that walked away both times. Right. You know, and he, they, and he always says that, you know, yeah. you know. They, they never fired him. Um, He was the one that made the decision. So that was his choice. He made his bed. He had a kind of lie in it a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, one of the things though, that I picked up. And I went back. And so after this became official, I did go back and, and actually watch my own doc interview. And I've never done that before. I've never gone back after releasing a podcast interview with somebody and actually watched my own podcast back. But I did with the doc thing because I was like, you know, I want to pick up now a little bit more some of the things he was saying about this deal. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I picked up is he said one, that they're working on it being like a full theater experience, I think was the mm -hmm. words that he used, you know, something along those lines. He said, oh, you're going to go in, there's going to be like a museum or whatever. And I, at the time, I just took took that to mean, you know, Doc Talk and Kiss always wanted to do things bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But as since then, when I went back and heard that comment, I've read and I've learned that with the ABBA avatars, that they've had to kind of rebuild whatever theater it was working in to incorporate the the right uh, sight lines and and they really made it a whole experience and apparently now i just read this in the last 24 hours they're looking to bring this to vegas no surprise there and i'll say reformat one of the theaters arenas whatever it is to be able to accommodate the abba avatars so of course, at that point, my my wheels start turning. All right, Pop House owns ABBA; they own Kiss. Who knows if they're going to go out and look to acquire Elvis or Led Zeppelin or whatever? Could Pop House be looking to transform a theater in Vegas so that this month it's the ABBA show, next month it's the Kiss show, the month after that it's the Led Zeppelin show? Blah blah blah. Like, is this part of a bigger plan for Pop House that we don't know yet? And obviously, I'm mm. totally speculating here. But as I read this, I'm like. Hmm, is this all part of their master? Do they think this is the future of live entertainment for bands that no longer exist? Mm. That's a good point. And that would be interesting to have something that cycles yeah. through like that. So you get a kind of a taste every so often of a different, you know, yeah. experience. So yeah. pure speculation on my part. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. know I've not read that anywhere. I've not heard anybody say that, but I did not realize that these theaters, the theater that they were using, I guess in London or Australia, whatever this was, had to be repurposed or refit for the avatars. I'm just thinking, set up, put your projector things in there, bang, two yeah. hours later, you're done. What the hell do I know? I know nothing about this nonsense. And I knew yeah. it would take more than two hours, but I just figured you just go in and you set it up however mm -hmm. long it takes. I didn't realize that the theater <clears> had to be refit for this purpose. So I'm like, all right, there's going to probably be something bigger in Vegas, pop house driven. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? With all of this said, do you look at that last show at the Garden now a little bit different? Uh, and the fact that do you think now maybe Kiss is part of this contract needed to show those avatars? I mean, this is not a contract they just started whipping up on December 2nd or 3rd, right? They've been talking about this probably for a while. I, I was wondering if this was contractually obligated to do that, something like that. As like a pre-promotion. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I don't know. You know yeah. It, um. So you're asking me, does it change? What, what exactly? Yeah. That, me I mean, that, does it change the way you view it? Cause I, I think, I think I was a little more harsh about it from day one. I think you've started to become a little more like, like I've still got a bit of taste in my mouth four months later four months later about the way that last show ended. Um, yeah. I have not four months later, I have not listened to a single kiss song in four months. Wow. Yeah. I just, uh, I've been a little bitter about that. Um, just like, mm. no, I, I've been a fan for 45 years. I deserved a different ending. And, and you know, 
who the hell might say I deserve a different ending, you know? Mm, um, yeah. But but I've I've had a little bit of bitterness, especially having gone to that final kicks show that I've mentioned a number of times here, and how right they did it, and they brought out pretty old older members. They did songs that those guys were on the albums. They brought out their whole crew at the end. They just did everything right, and then to me, kiss did it all wrong. Um, I was actually stunned. <laughs> I didn't even know how to react at first when he said it. Doc said that he was the one that thought of that whole ending and leaving in a cloud of smoke. I was like, well, I guarantee you, if you would have asked KISS fans before that interview, was it Paul Stanley that did that, that came up with that? I bet you 90% of fans would have said, of course, it's Paul Stanley. He makes every decision for KISS, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah. Before I released that Doc interview, I should have put a poll on my page. Who do you think came up with the mm-hmm. ending? And I guarantee you 90% of people would have said Paul, you know, but I'm... Um, yeah, I do look at that ending right now a little different. I'm wondering if it was contractually obligated, even though the contract wasn't signed off well, on yet. Well, the thing is about that ending, they could have done both. They could yes. have ended and with a puff of smoke or whatever, a big puff of smoke, <laughs> and did the Avatar thing, but still acknowledged everybody who played for Agreed. twenty for 30 seconds. Agreed. Agreed. You and know, that's why I asked Doc about that. And he's like, well, we showed them on screens or whatever. And I was like, yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not v- verbalizing through a microphone, you know. Agreed. You know, uh, I think KISS fans wanted to hear some sort of dialogue at the end. Yeah. Acknowledgement. Even even there wasn't even like. Well, I mean, paraphrase, you know, we've done so many shows and we really want to thank all you fans who came out all the years, supported us. You know, we love you. We'll always mm-hmm. love you. We'll never forget the memories that we've made. Nothing. It was just like a yeah. it was really just a regular KISS show it with was. a big puff of smoke at the end and a fucking <laughs> Avatar thing. There was yeah. nothing. They didn't deviate at all, really. Not if one you think bit. about it, nothing was improvised, you know, nothing. 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 You know? Yep. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. It's um, but I do look at that ending now a little differently, knowing what we know now. It doesn't mean I like it, but I do look at it a little bit differently. Um now saying this also, Doc mentioned in my interview that Kiss retained some percentage of ownership. He didn't say how much, nor did I expect him to, and that Paul and Gene still had decision rights. And after reading the press release, you know, about um, Pop House buying this, I started thinking about his comment that Paul and Gene still own decision rights. And I was like, they might have decision rights, but there's no way Pop House is spending $300 million on this. And they decide as an entity that they want to do X. And Paul and Gene say, no, we really don't want you to do that. And they say, okay, we won't. That's okay. We spent $300 million. You get to tell us what to do. Um I know, and I, the only thing I could think of the comparison is when George Lucas stole, sold Star Wars to Disney. I'm a big Star Wars fan, a big, big Disney guy. And George Lucas was supposed to be consulted on as things go forward with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And then they did those newer movies, seven, eight, nine. And I think at first they were talking about consulting with him. And then instantly they just cut him out and they did it all on, on their own. I have a feeling that's going to be the way this goes down with Paul and Gene. There's no way a company spending $300 million and then saying, but you tell us how to run our company. And even though you own, own maybe a small sliver of it, you tell us the decisions to make. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they own anything at this point, quite yeah. honestly. Um, <laughs> I think I was going to, before you even said, I, I think they're probably just consultants to, to them and they will, you know, work with them through a lot of these ideas and stuff like that. You know, and we all know in a certain point, they're not going to be around for that anyways. Right. Not, don't be, be, you know, macabre here. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I don't believe that they, um, I mean, I guess we could be wrong that maybe they said, oh, you still have 5% or some small percentage. But we even if they have officially. 5%, that means yeah. 95% <clears throat> of the decisions, not this. Exactly. It's going to be so minor that ultimately, if this company wants to do what they want to do, as you said, they made a $300 million investment. Why would you give make a three hundred million dollar investment and and then still relinquish the final say in doing X, Y, and Z? Right. That to me makes no sense. No, you know. I agree. I do think I and I think you said it perfectly. I think Paul and Gene will be consulted with, right? Because Pop House might think that hey, Paul and Gene know better than us right now what mm-hmm. Kiss fans want. But long term, and maybe long term being the next year, <laughs> I think mm-hmm. Pop House will be the one making the decisions, and. I don't know. Will that be for the better? Will it be for the worse? I guess time will tell, right? I, I don't know, you know, but um, you know, maybe, I don't, I don't know, you know, you're saying one of the co-owners of this is somebody from ABBA, so he's obviously older, but if they have a bunch of younger people of forward thinking, 
thinking about technology the way you and I, uh, mm -hmm. certainly the way I am not capable. I don't want to put you in that. Uh, you're more of an IT guy than me. But um, mm -hmm. maybe it'll be for the better. But yeah, I, that, I went again when I went back and watched my doc interview. I was and he was saying that they still have decision rights. I'm like, ah, no. I I think the consultants probably like you said perfectly. Yeah. I don't think they have yeah. full on decisions here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. And then I don't know if you saw yes, I think it was like I was saying. Gene did an interview and he's like, oh yeah, this deal is not about the money. And I just look. I rolled my eyes. I'm like, come on. Come yeah. on now. I'm not saying that him and Paul and Doc and whatever wanted to continue making decisions. I understand they're in their 70s. But if Gene was offered $10 million for the brand, he would not have sold. You know? yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> to True. some degree, this was about the money. Right? Of course. And, a certain and level, it should be. I mean, and it should be. And I it have should no be. problem there's, with that. There's a certain level of pride of what you built. I mean, you don't yeah. want to undervalue all this work that you've done. Of course. You yeah. know, I mean, again, let's step back. You know, it's 1995 when they're doing a worldwide, you know, unplug tour, whatever the hell they were doing. Yeah. You know, they were floundering at that point. Yeah. You know, the music industry had changed so much. They didn't know which, what would have Kiss been without a reunion. We, I mean, we'll never know, but chances yeah. are, big chance are, they never, ever would have come even like, not even a dip in the toe in the pool Agreed. to the to, to what they gained from that reunion tour. Agreed. I could say that with a thousand percent certainty. There's no way. Yeah. Not all of a sudden they would have become a boy band in the late nineties. Like, <laughs> and it would have been like, we have a choice tonight. You can see the Backstreet Boys and sync. Oh, Kiss is a boy band now. Did you hear about that? You know what I mean? <laughs> that would not have happened. Well, know? well, think about that time period, right? And I'll go like over a five year, six year span, right? Stanley had done those solo shows in 89 playing in clubs, mm -hmm. as you would expect, right? Um, the Revenge Tour had to be pulled because it wasn't, you know, drawing enough people of an audience. Even here in New York, the arenas were at best half filled mm -hmm. at best, you know, um, then they're doing the unplugged you know, tour in clubs to 500 or a thousand people. Right. Um, to your point, the, the business just was not there at all. That reunion mm -hmm. needed to happen for them. Even and you know you could just tell me and I'm kind of answering the question. Even before that, how did um, the Hot and Shade tour do? The Hot and the Shade tour at first, no promoter wanted to take it because right. you know Kiss was not drawn across the country here in the states the way you know they were anticipated to, which is why the album came out what in October and the tour didn't start until May. I think it was mm -hmm. if I have my date, mm -hmm. if I have my timeline right. I think the the album came out in October or September of '89. And the tour started like six months later because nobody was willing, no promoter was willing to, to pick it up until Forever became a hit on the radio. Once right. Forever became a hit, then they were able to book a tour with a triple bill. You know, so, I mean, if you remember, like I know some of the shows I saw was uh, Fast the Pussycat and Wingo were, were supporting them. Slaughter was supporting them for basically that whole tour. Um, it was still, they needed a strong bill even to to get the promoters to, to book them out for, for arenas across the country. And did it do well at that point? Yeah, I think it did. I think overall it did well, um, you know, mm. on the heels of forever being a hit, on the heels of it being a triple bill. You know, I'm not saying it was the first triple bill ever, mm. but it's the first one I remember where I was going to a show and I was seeing three bands that I enjoyed. And, you know, mm. yes, it was an opener, a middle and, and a headline. And no, it wasn't like it was a festival here, but um, mm. I don't remember. And I'm sure somebody who's watching or listening could correct me. I don't remember ever seeing a triple bill non-festival triple bill like that before that so i'm guessing the promoters probably forced mm. kissed it it certainly wasn't the norm you know mm. i know like bon jovi did cinderella and bon jovi and i know david lee roth had cinderella open right those certainly cases for strong opening acts i don't recall what three well, bands cinderella was not a strong opening act for david lee roth when we saw him because they were really sure. unknown at that they point. were unknown yes that, that's yeah, a fair point yeah yeah. That's a very fair point. But even the Bon Jovi Cinderella thing was two bands. I don't recall three bands mm. who were, I mean, Slaughter was the opening act on that tour and Fly of the Angels was a big radio hit at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, so That's true. yes, they were the third of three bands on the bill, but they were drawn on their own as well. Yeah. And, and did you say Winger also? 
Yeah, Winga was the middle band then, for a while. Um, and which, and they were at that point, they were really successful. Yeah, I mean, they exactly. had those MTV hits and stuff exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, these were not no name bands that, that were opening up for them. You know, even the third on mm-hmm. the bill was not a no name band. So, mm-hmm. the point just being that Kiss obviously wasn't the draw that it had been in prior years. Not that mm-hmm. there's anything wrong with that. They've been around for at that point, what, 17 years or 15 years? Mm-hmm. You go mm-hmm. through your peaks and valleys, but. um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to me, it'll just be interesting with this whole pop house thing. You know, what do they do with this? And I was thinking a lot about the fact that they they paid three hundred million dollars for this, but they don't own the music, so they still have to pay something back to Universal, unless they use just those fifteen songs that Kiss re-recorded and Monster and Sonic Boom, which is not mm. going to be what they use for this, right? So um, right, yeah, they still have to pay out money to use the music. Which I th- I'd never thought about that before, but I'm like that. That's a very interesting business model mm-hmm. that they're going to have there. Which is mm-hmm. why you said you read that um, they have a good relationship with Universal. That's probably important to them. But Universal could be stole tomorrow, and then who knows? You know. And it's really interesting if you think about what music are they using for these Avatar shows. I mean, like when they do a, a live performance of Deuce, what, what what version are they using? What the heck are they using? Will they use just like they did, like you brought up the Guitar Hero thing before, where Kiss gave like different recordings that they had? Um, will they use things like that? Will we get to hear unreleased 70s recordings that they'll use for the Avatar performances? I think that's very possible. Yeah. But I mean, just think about that for a second when you're going to see a show, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to see, you know, um, this avatar thing and they're just you know they're doing do strut or whatever and it's all versions from the first album musically mm-hmm. i mean how much interest do you have in that because it's not a live close to zero close to right. zero mm-hmm. all right so now all right no they're using a live the live version you know right still close songs. to zero right so what can they how do you I know with AI, they could do so much stuff and who knows if they have an AI that could recreate these versions. And right. they obviously, they could, they could do vocals, mm-hmm. voices. They could, AI could, you know, imitate or impersonate or whatever the heck the word mm-hmm. is. It's a really pa- powerful and kind of scary tool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's the thing that interests me in the sense of what they're going to do. Not so much that I would go to see it. Right. You know, I don't see myself flying to Vegas to go see a Kiss show with avatars at all. Right. And to your point, um, to what you're saying about some other stuff, I really have zero interest in that. So what would get me interested to go see a a Kiss Avatar show? I'm going this this coming Tuesday. I'm going to see Rain, which is like a Beatles, um, what they call a tribute or whatever, where the the guys actually perform Beatles music. They put on, you know, the of that, you know, the early 60s. And then they kind of do the whole thing. And I've seen uh, there was a very brief stint on Broadway um a, a Beatles show I, I forgot what it was called and I, it was like one of my favorite things I ever went to see because it was the closest mm-hmm. thing to me hearing the Beatles live you know yep. that always interests me because you're hearing a real band with they're playing the instruments and you know they're doing the voices but to just see you know avatars doing pre-recorded versions of, of songs we've heard before I- just can't see how that's exciting at all i don't know i'm just now i I wonder and maybe this is part of the reason you off the soundboards were paused but what if they used a previously unheard recording from i don't know 1975 i just randomly picked a year right so you haven't heard this recording ever before it was recorded in timbuktu or whatever in 1975 and now the avatars are the visual to a sound recording that you've never heard before I mean a sound live recording? Yeah, a sound live recording. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so Kiss has a soundboard recording from 1975 or picky, it doesn't matter which one, you know, and nobody's ever heard it before. And the avatars will be performing to that live recording that was never heard before. Now, in that case, Pop House does not have to pay Universal because Universal does not own that recording. Um, a fan who's going gets to hear something live recording that they've never heard before. And the avatars is like the visual treat, if you will, to the soundtrack that you're listening to. My interest has gone up a little bit. I don't know if it's even at 20%, but my interest is, good. My interest is no longer zero for that. You know, I would say my interest is in curiosity would mm-hmm. be to go to one of these things, just curiosity. But I'm sure before I have the opportunity to go, unless you have the opportunity to go to the first one, 
you're going to see all this stuff on YouTube and stuff like that. So you right. kind of get a sense of what it is because everything's on social media or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It just, I really don't have really, I've from day one, I think it's cool. I saw the, the ABBA thing and it's incredible how realistic it looks. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, as much as I always will love to see Elvis Presley, you know, I've know they've had these, these kind of similar things. And yeah. I don't know. I just, I just, don't see myself really having any interest other than what you're saying is that maybe there's a version of something that you've heard or never heard before. And I, I, I don't know. Just I, I'd still rather just have the off the soundboard release. <laughs> no, that's just, just give me the off the soundboard record yeah. and I'm happy. I don't have yeah. to spend, you know, whatever. I'm sure it's not going to be, Oh, 20 bucks to go see this or whatever. No, I'm sure it's going to sure still be, you know, but um, again, it's uncharted territory for us. I think we've never had the opportunity and no. until we're given that opportunity, we can make those decisions, but I don't know. Uh, just I'm not buying into it. L last point. last comment, and then we'll wrap up. So Doc also said, and he said he was just kind of talking off the top of his head that they didn't mention really doing this, but he said, I'd love to see the guys record a couple of new songs for the avatars. Do you think that's even likely? And would you be excited for a couple of new songs? I think the only way that's likely is like if they do some sort of theme song or some sort of intro mm -hmm. or something, you know, to talk about the show. I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to go um, re-record old songs um, or do an album of this stuff. Right. I just I just don't know. Um, I guess any like he I think as Doc said something like anything is possible, you know, right. or something like that. I think he used those words. If, yeah. If yeah. And mistaken. he said he was kind of just talking off the top of his head. Something yeah, he'd yeah, love to yeah. to you know see the guys do but it's it's nothing official by any means yeah i think it was up to gene gene would be all excited on doing that i think yeah. gene's realized paul's had a lot of that control you know yeah. i don't buy into a why we putting out records or you know what for i mean right you know whether you're judas priest or whoever you know these bands have been doing this stuff for the last 10 plus years you know people are putting out music yep you know, you're one of the biggest bands that ever lived and you're not doing that. There's got to be another reason why you're doing that. You know, Agreed. it's just, yep. I don't know, as an artist, you know, you always want to be, I mean, look, is anybody going to tell Paul to stop painting? He's always right. going to want to be creative. And I, maybe that's why he doesn't do music. Yep. Maybe he realizes vocally it's tough for him. Maybe that's why he does Soul Station because it's an easier, not that that music is easy to sing. I'm not saying that. No, but, but maybe there's like nine vocalists on stage with him. Right, Exactly. And, you know, Kiss, you know, you listen to old Kiss recordings and how he had to sing that kind of music, right. you know, soul music, you could be a lot more laid back and, you mm -hmm. know, and this different type of, you know, technique. Yeah. Um, I like to believe that it was really Paul's control over that, you know, of like kind of squashing that with where mm -hmm. there was opportunity, you know? Agreed. Agreed. So. Well, it'll be interesting to see where this all goes. Obviously there's be a lot more discussion on this, I'm sure in the next couple of years, but, um, I thought it was good just for us to get on, talk about it, talk a little bit about some of the things Doc said in the interview with me, talk about what this agreement is and is not, right? And just to be clear again, KISS did not sell their music. They did mm -hmm. that decades ago, right? Yeah. They This was their publishing, this was their royalties, this is their trademarks, et cetera. This was not those classic 70s albums. When I see people saying, KISS should have got much more than 300 million for their music, well, that's not the right, that's not what they sold. That's mm -hmm. not what they sold. And, and, you know, it's kind of sad because most bands don't even own their masters and all. And you know this, right? Because you, you're involved in recording and music and all of that. And, um, you know, I look at somebody even like um, Taylor Swift. She's re-recording every one of her albums because she doesn't own the masters, right? So mm -hmm. even when you are an artist of that magnitude, a lot of times you don't own your own music, right? So that mm -hmm. is not, in this case, that is not what Kiss sold. Kiss yeah. sold their trademarks. All of those products, the Kiss toilet paper, et cetera, now is owned by Pop House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we won't get any more Kiss coffins. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that one. Hmm, that's interesting. I, didn't think I, I wonder that. if Pop House will now flood the market with even more product with the Kiss logo. Well, you on be, it. I mean, you invest in three hundred million dollars, you would think, yeah, they they're gonna want to, you know, get a return on their investment. You yeah. know, 
yeah. it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I don't know how many more product they could possibly put out. You <laughs> I don't know. know either. You know? Oh, man, that'll but, be fascinating to see in the next year if, like, every place you turn, if there's a Kiss logo on everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. If that happens, it's not Paul and Gene, it's Pop House. Right, right. <laughs> so Paul and Gene indirectly since they sold the brand, but it's Pop House making those decisions. But right. anything else, my friend, before we wrap this up? No, I think we've covered all our bases. I think so as well. Well, I appreciate you spending your Saturday morning with me. This has been glorious. (laughs) And um, I look forward to, we're going to be doing a few of these episodes. We have another Kiss one that we've already recorded that will release after this one. And uh, I think we're going to do a couple of other Bon Jovi ones since this month there's a lot of Bon Jovi Mm -hmm. stuff going on. So uh, Mm -hmm. be on the lookout. We have plenty more coming your way. And um, certainly all, all the people watching and listening, we look for your comments. What do you think of this sale? Did you realize it was not the music? You know, what do you think Pop House is going to do with the Kiss product now? Did it bother you that Paul and Gene sold? Did you not care? Let us know all the thoughts that you have, and um, we'll certainly go through and read and respond to your comments. Absolutely. So on that note, my friends, we'll leave. I'll leave with the I knew it. I knew it. I I, I was waiting for it. I had my hands prepared down here. I'm not going double double Ringo today. We're doing the gene. All right. Everybody, thanks for watching as always. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. All righty. There you have it. Our thoughts and our comments about Kiss selling the brand, the logo, the makeup, and everything that that sale does and does not represent. You heard our opinion, and of course, we'd love to hear yours. Let us know what you think about this sale. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.